our glory. Welcome to a new life in Christ Jesus Church where Jesus Christ is glorified. Amen, amen. Well, let us all stand. Let's go ahead and get started today. Father, we come to you right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you for this time. We thank you for this day. For this is the day that thou hast made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we bless you, and we thank you. We give you praise, we give you glory, and we give you honor, Lord God. For we can do nothing in ourselves. So we humble ourselves before your mighty hand, that you may exalt us in due time. We cast all of our care upon you, for you care for us. Father, we want to thank you today for the word that will go forth. I ask you, Father, to, that you would anoint every ear to hear, prepare every heart to receive. Make my tongue as of a pen of a ready writer to write your word upon the hearts and upon the mind of your people that they will know the truth and that the truth shall make them free. Father, you're calling the church into a spirit of unity, into a spirit of holiness. Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm asking you, Father, Lord, let the fire of the Holy Ghost begin to penetrate every heart, including mine own, Lord God. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost be begin to penetrate every heart. Father, may your kingdom come and your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. And Father, we give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise in the glorious and mighty, majestic name of Jesus and all that agree with that said, amen and amen. Well, God bless you all today. I'm glad to have you all with us today and I pray that today that the Lord will minister to your hearts and that you will have a, a wonderful experience in the presence of the Lord today. Amen. I'm expecting God to speak to our hearts. I'm expecting God to begin a new thing. Amen. Today is a new beginning. Today is the day of new beginnings. Amen. So today, I'm expecting God to touch your lives today. Amen. I'm going to go ahead and sing you a song. Then we're going to go ahead and get involved. Go ahead and go with the message. Amen. Glory to God. <clears throat> Thank you, Father. Oh, we worship you. We praise you. <coughs> yes, Lord. Lift up your heads. No need to mourn. His hand is stretched out still for unto us a child is born His promise to fulfill Jerusalem He cried for you He did not come
for the child that was born there. His spirit never died. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We worship you. lesson uh, a few weeks ago, amen, well, walking in the unity, calling, God is calling the church into the spirit of unity, amen, and, and you know what, uh, I believe that this is right on target, this is right on key, and this is one of the reasons why we fast the last three days out of each month, you see, today, we enter into a new beginning, we enter into a new beginning today, and today, I want you to release your faith. And I'm asking God that he will grant each and every one under the sound of my voice, you that are here with me and you that are with me by the internet, a spirit of unity, a spirit of one accord. Amen. A spirit of one mind. Because you see, this is where we will see the glory of God in the earth like never before. We will put aside our differences. There will be no, there will be no, uh, uh, no one trying to uh, put themselves above someone else. No one trying to push someone down with, with, with uh, scandalizing, you know, with, with uh, words. You know, words are powerful. Words are very powerful. Amen. You might not have a gun to shoot someone, but your words can, can shoot someone just as well and bring them down. Amen. In, in, in the eyes of others. So God is looking for a spirit of unity. God is looking for the, the, the love amongst the brethren and not 
uh, bickering and not complaining, not fighting because of denomination. Because if we all, if we are born again children of God, if we do love God as we say that we do, then why would there be any fussing among us? Why would there be any fighting among us? Why would someone look at someone and, and, not, and not walk in love with them because of their color? Because of their, uh, their, their because of their, their, their nation that they are from or their character. Amen. God's love is over all. Amen. Because God created every man in his own image and after his likeness. Amen. In God there's no male nor female, Jew nor Greek, male or, gent or Gentile. We all are one body. Amen. We all are one body. And when we come together as one body, friend, I'm telling you, we will see the glory of the Lord in this place. Amen. No more prejudice. No more people looking at one another uh, 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 because of the color of the skin. You can't make no one's skin black or white. You can't make one's skin red or polka dot for that concern. Amen. You cannot change the color of your skin. That's God. God created you. Amen. So why do we fight? If we are Christians, why can't we just walk in love as Christians? Because you see, if we're going to walk in one accord as men and women of God, then we're going to have to come into a spirit of unity as God commanded us. Amen. As God commanded us. I was reminded yesterday about a prophecy that was given me back during the uh, 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 the School of Men, the, the World Conference, amen, with Dr. Marcerillo. I, I was reminded about that on last night, and it's talking about uh, John 17, unity, amen, was prophesied over me, and I had forgot all about it. But I was reminded to, about that last night, so I went, I went back to listen to that prophecy once again, that was prophesied over me. And lo and behold, I am preaching along that line and God wanted me to remember what he had told me. And so I went and looked it up and I said, honey, I called my wife, I said, honey, guess what? I, you know, it, but, but without me realizing, I was ministering along the same line that was prophesied over me and I didn't even realize it until tonight, until last night when God revealed it to me. Amen. And, 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 when, and when I began to listen to that prophecy, it's just like the presence of God filled my room, the, my office at home where I was sitting. I said, oh, my God. I, it was so intense, folks, so intense. So I know that we are in the place that we are ministering along the line that God would have us to minister. And I believe with all my heart that God is calling the church to a spirit of unity. Amen. See, God is going to bring the body of Christ together. Black, white, Russian, uh, Ukrainian, uh, Mexican, uh, 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 Indonesian, uh, whatever your nationality is, Pakistanian, amen, uh, in Africans. God want to bring us all into a spirit of unity, amen, into a spirit of love, amen, because once that, once that began to take place, we, the body of Christ will come together as a a bouquet of roses, of flowers, amen, different color flowers. And it will, it will, it will, and it's going to send a, a, a fragrance to the nostrils of God like he longed for, for all eternity. Amen. Why? Because you see, God wants his nature in the heart of every man. He wants his character in the heart of every man. God is not looking at our nationality. He's not looking at our cultures. He's not looking at our ethnic groups. God is looking at our hearts. He's looking at our hearts. And when we can get, when we can, can get our eyes off of the flesh and start looking as God, and start trying to see as God sees, then we will not have room to talk about someone. Because you see, if we try to talk about someone, our, folk, our, our other finger will be punting right back at us. Amen. Our other thing will be pun right back at us. Because you see, God has made us all unique. He fashioned us all in his image. There's none like you nowhere. So why you are why are you want to fight someone about, about how you look and 
and what so forth and so on. Amen. Just let God be God. Amen. And you follow him in the spirit of unity, in the spirit of love. The Bible it, it is clear about that. Amen. I want to take you to a few scriptures because it was brought to my attention on last night. <clears throat> so I just um, I just geared I just geared this lesson around so that we can have uh, understanding of what God is saying. <clears throat> Amen. And so I want to take your attention right back to the spirit to the uh, Psalms 133. Psalms 133. Amen. We're going to we're going to look at this and we're going to go home to uh, to see some more scriptures because when I started this I tell you it really really then dawned on me that I was ministering along the same line that was prophesied over me until last night. Amen. And so I'm 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 I'm, I'm just wanting to just share now. Glory to God. So it says in Psalms in Psalms 133 and verse 1 Psalms 133 and verse 1. Amen. So I want you all to get your Bible and just go with me. Because you see, I believe that God is going to bring a spirit of unity. Amen. And it's going to deal with the prejudice that is in the church. Amen. I believe that God is about to knock over some sacred cows. Glory to God. Amen. And I want you to be on board. I want you to be ready to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. Amen. So get your get get let's get let's get it together. Let's come together. Amen. Let's come together and let's see what God is saying to us. Amen. From the Spirit from the from the from the uh, the Holy Bible. Glory to God. Amen. It said behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. In unity. Amen. Are y'all with me on that? Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. In unity. Amen. So now, as we look at that, as we look at that, we can see that God, is dealing with the heart of man because how can man walk together except they be in agreement? Amen? Except they be in agreement. So we see that God is dealing with the heart here. God is dealing with the heart. And so I believe that God is about to show himself strong on the behalf of his people. Are you ready to see the hand of God moving among you like you've never seen before? Are you ready to experience heaven on earth? Amen. Then I want to encourage you to humble yourself before the mighty hand of God. That he may exalt you in due time. And I want you all to also be prepared for communion today. Because today is communion day. Amen. We want you to be prepared for communion. Amen. And we want to uh, uh, just, uh, just enjoy, enjoy this day. You know, we just come off a three-day fast, amen, and and uh, and today is uh, is the first Sunday, and so Father, in the name of Jesus, I enter a, I release a fresh anointing upon this congregation and upon the people that are viewing us by the internet and those that are listening by the internet, Father. I'm asking right now. For a fresh awareness of your presence for this month of July. Father, help us to be specially aware of our surrounding and everything that is that is that is going on around our household and our families in Jesus' name. Help us to be on alert at all times. And Father, I don't know why I'm saying this, but God, there's a reason, it, and I believe that you already had it planned out. So, Father. I'm asking in the name of Jesus for the spirit of discerning. The spirit of discerning. Father, let this month be a month that we come together with a spirit of unity. A spirit of one accord with one mind. Father, let this be the month that the body of Christ begin to walk in the love of God. Oh, hallelujah. And God, I thank you for it now. In advance. 
in Jesus' name. Because eyes have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have it entered into the heart of man the things that God, you, have prepared for them that love you and that walk up right before you. Father, so I ask for that spirit of unity among us in the name that is above every name. And I thank you for it. Amen and amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I believe that we are about to see, amen, the spirit of unity unfolding. Amen. Let's read that verse again. How, behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Or you could say in the spirit. Or you could say in one mind, one accord, one vision. Amen. One vision. Amen. And so God is looking for us to come together as a body of believers. Amen. Now, 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 when I look at this, I see in the book of uh, Ecclesiastes chapter four, the book of Ecclesiastes chapter four, that's right after the book of Proverbs, if you want to go there with me. Ecclesiastes chapter four, amen, is right after Proverbs. And I want to go there. And I want to look at Verse number 9, Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse number 9. Now notice what it says here, because it's very powerful. And if we could get a hold of this, we could see, oh my God, what God is actually saying to us. So he says right here in verse number 9, Two are better than one, because they have a good reward for their labor. Two are better than one because they have a, a good reward for their labor. In other words, when you're walking together in unity with your brother or with your sister, amen, then you are stronger because you are not alone. And when you are uh, connected with the one that God has connected you with and you're walking in unity and in one accord, I'm telling you, you will experience the presence of God, the power of God like you've never experienced before. Amen? Because of that unity. Glory to God. And nothing that you decide to do because you're walking in unity will be restrained from you because God has made it so. Amen? God has ordained it so. And so when we look at this right here in verse number 9, it says, Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. Amen? What do you mean? They're able to accomplish more. They're able to stand up against adversities better than one. If, if it's only one, he liable to fall. But if, if he fall, then if he have a partner with him, that partner can reach down and help him back up. But if he's alone, who can help him up? Who can help him? Verse 10, if they fall for one, if they fall, the one will lift up the other. Amen. Will lift up his fellow. But woe unto him that is alone when he fought it, for he had not another to help him up. For he had not another to help him up. So when we're walking in the spirit of unity, we are able to walk in the spirit of God. Amen. We're walking in the spirit of God. How do you, how do you, how, how do you say that? Because you see, when we're walking in the spirit, we're not walking in our own strength. We're not walking in our abilities. We're walking in his strength. We're walking in his abilities. We're walking according to what he has given us. Amen. And when we're walking according to what he has given us, it doesn't matter what Tom says. It doesn't matter what, what Johnny says. It doesn't matter what Susie says or what Barbara says. What matters is that what God has said. Amen. You want to stay in unity to what God has spoken over your life. Keep Even if you are, have to stand alone, because one day it's going to pay off. One day it's going to pay off. You might look at it and say, well, why do I have to do this, God? Why do I have to be alone? Why do I have to uh, separate myself for this, for, for, from everybody else? Because God, God, when God asks you to separate yourself, you may not understand it, but there's something that is coming down the pipeline that might contaminate you, that might cause you to become <clears throat> bitter, 
bitter, that may cause you to become ill, that may cause you to, to come into a spirit of resentment. Amen. But if God tells you to separate, don't ask questions why. Just do what God said. And, and then follow the instruction that he gives you after he tells you to separate. Because you see, even if you're traveling alone, you're not alone because you're obeying God. You're obeying God. Amen. Because God is not going to allow you to fall. Because you're walking in unity with what he has called you to do when you fall. He's going to pick you up again. A righteous man will fall seven times, but he'll get up every time. He'll get up every time. Why? How is he going to get up? Because the Lord is with him. Why? How is the Lord with him? Because he's walking in a spirit of unity with the word of God and with the spirit of God and with the Lord God Almighty. Hallelujah. I want to show you something here in the word that's going to help you to understand what I'm saying. Amen. And, 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 uh, and uh, it says right here in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 4, amen, in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 4, in verse number, in verse number, uh, uh, look at verse, verse number 11, again, if two lie together, then they are, then they have heat, but how can one be warm alone? But how can one be warm alone? Amen. That gives us something to think about. Ain't that right, honey? That gives us something to think about. Amen? Because, you see, if you are with someone, now, if you're not together with that person, amen, then you are not walking in unity. So where there's, where there's not unity, that means there's, a, there's been a, a, a division. There's been a wedge trying to, the image trying to place a wedge between you. Amen. To stop that spirit of unity. To hinder the will of God or the work of God in your life. Amen. So that unity, especially in marriage, is very important. Amen. I'm coming to see that even, even today more than I've seen it in a long time. Amen. Because you see, God is calling the church to a spirit of unity. And if the church is being called to a spirit of unity, then listen, the husband and wife are called to be uh, walking into a spirit of unity. Why? Because you see, unity, a oneness, must begin at home. If you're gonna, uh, if, if, if you're gonna, if you're gonna minister to those that are abroad, then you gotta first minister first at home. Amen. Glory to God. And my wife is shaking her head, saying, "Yep, yep." <laughs> Amen. So we are, we are in agreement with that. Amen. We're in agreement with that. And so God is looking for you and me to come into a spirit of unity even now as we stand here on this word. Because God is giving us everything that we need to declare everything that he wants us to declare. And he wants us to declare it by faith. Faith without works is dead. Amen. Faith without works is dead. Now let's look at verse number 12. It says, and if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him, and a threefold cord is not quickly broken. So if you standing with your spouse, my God, that's two, and you're strong, just you two alone. But just think, when you stand in the spirit of Almighty God, that's a threefold cord and that threefold cord is not easily broken amen it's not easily broken there's unity there's the there's the spirit of of, of of love there's the spirit of the same mind and when you're speaking when you're declaring you're declaring exactly what god is saying amen exactly what god is saying amen god is calling us together he's calling the body of christ together We've been fighting so long, amen, that the enemy has almost taken control of the church, amen, because there's so much fighting, there's so much uh, 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 misunderstanding, and people, we need to, we need to, we need to uh, examine our motives, amen, we need to examine our hearts, especially if you are a child of God, and you walking in church, and you can't even stand and look at your your, your, your brother or your sister that's in church with you. Amen. Something is terribly wrong. Amen. So we need to examine our hearts. God said if we will judge ourselves, then we will not be judged with the world. 
But if we don't judge ourselves, amen, see, our own action will condemn us. Our very lifestyle will condemn us. God doesn't get pleasure out of his people uh, being beat down by the enemy or uh, being destroyed for a lack of knowledge. God wants us to obtain that knowledge that we may walk in the light of the word. Amen. The Bible tells us that if you are my disciples indeed, and you shall continue in my word, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. It's the truth that shall make you free. Amen. So we need to understand what God is saying to us. Because we are in the last days and God is calling us to a spirit of unity. He's calling us to a spirit of one accord. And he's telling us right now that it's time to get our act together. It's time for us to get our act together. Amen. So now let's look at the book of Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1 and verse number 14. Acts chapter 1 and verse number 14. Amen. I want you to go there with me because we are on a, we are on a journey right now. And I want you to walk this journey with me. Amen. I want you to walk this journey with me. Amen. As we go through these scriptures today. Because I believe that God is speaking to our hearts. I truly believe that. That God is speaking to our hearts. Amen. That God is speaking. In Acts chapter 1. Now let's look here at verse number 4. Acts chapter 1 verse number 4 says. And being assembled together with them. Commanding them that they should not depart from the from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which said he, Ye have heard of me, but John for John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Amen. When they when they therefore were come together, they asked him, they asked of him, saying, Lord, with thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the time or the season which the Father had put in his own power, but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Amen. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. What is he's, he's, he's looking at a spirit of unity. Amen. Among the people. He's looking at a spirit of one accord. Now notice we're going to see that in just a minute. Amen. We're going to see that in just a minute. Now notice what he notice what he said here in verse number verse number nine. And when he was when he had thus spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by him in white apparel, which also said, "Ye men of Galilee." Why stand ye gazing up into heaven? The same Jesus in which the same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Then return they unto Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet. Now notice they were all walking together. They were walking together. They were walking in one spirit. They were walking in one accord. Amen. They were walking in one accord. Now, let's look at chapter 2 and verse number 1. Now, let's go down to verse number 14. Verse number 14. These all continue with one accord. Notice what he said. These all continue with one accord. Amen. In prayer and supplication. With the women and Mary, the, the mother of Jesus, and with the and with his brethren. Amen. So they all continued with one accord. Amen. So when we see that one accord, we can see, we can truly say that God is among us. We can truly say that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is what? There is unity. There is unity. There is one mind. There is one spirit. There is one accord. Amen. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is what? Unity. Unity. Hallelujah. Amen. And so when I look at, when I see this, when I see this, it, it, it gives me, it, it helps me to, to, to focus out just a little bit further. It helped me to focus out just a little bit further. Now, now remember, we're talking about the John 17 unity. Amen. <laughs> we're talking about unity. Amongst the body of Christ. Amen. Now we're gonna if we're gonna look at the John 17 unity, then we will look at we will see ourselves 
walking in one accord with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So let's look at John chapter 17 right now. John chapter 17. Amen. Because you see, I want you to understand what God is doing. God is about to do something that's going to get your attention. And he's, going to, and he's not looking at your personality. He's not looking at your knowledge. He's not looking at your prestige. He's looking at your heart. He's looking at your heart. Amen. And I want you to prepare yourself. I want you to prepare yourself. Because when God began to speak to your heart during this message, that you begin to hear and honor Him as He speaks to your heart. You begin to hear and honor Him as He speaks to your heart. Amen. Glory to God. Just look in that connection right there. Right there, hon. No. Okay. Okay. So now, so now in John chapter 17, look at verse number 20. John chapter 17 and verse number 20 says, Neither pray I for those for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through your through their uh through their word. So when we preach the word of God, he said in, in John chapter 17, verse 20, he said, Neither neither pray I for, for these alone, but for them also which believe on me through their words. Through their words. In other words, as we come together and start walking in unity, there are going to be people around you that you thought that you would never reach. But because the spirit of unity is beginning to rest upon you, because God began to deal with your hearts in one accord, amen, that spirit of unity is releasing a, a, an anointing and a power that you never walked in before. Amen. That you never walked in before. And now you are able to see the yokes that are being destroyed because of the anointing. You are able to see the burdens removed and the, the, the yoke that the enemy has placed around you, your head, amen, that spirit of depression, it won't have no power over the people that God is sending you to minister to because you see the spirit of unity is giving you added strength to set the captives free. Amen. For this is the purpose that the Son of God was manifest to destroy the works of the devil. And God, if the Lord Jesus had to walk in, 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 in one accord with the Father and with the Spirit, then why do you think that you can accomplish more without it? We have to walk in line with the Spirit of God. We have to walk in the line with the Spirit of unity. Amen. We must come in one accord. We must come in one accord. The Bible tells us in verse number 21 says that they all may be one as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee. That they also may be one in us. That the world may believe that thou hast sent me. Amen. You see, we got to see ourselves. We got to identify ourselves in the Father. Amen. We got to identify and see ourselves in the Father. Amen. Because you see, He is the, the, the head. Amen. He is the head and we are His body. Amen. So how can we walk in agreement with Him except we identify with the word that He's given us. Amen. He said that we are, notice what He said. I'm going to read verse number 21 again. John chapter 17 and verse number, verse number 1. Verse number 20 I mean. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which thou which shall believe on me through their words. Verse 21. That they all may be one. Notice what he said. That they all may be one. Amen. See, God is looking for a spirit of oneness in the church. There's so much division. That, and, 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 and so many have compromised because of that. So many... Men of God have compromised because of it. And God is looking to bring a spirit of unity back into the church once again. A spirit of righteousness, a spirit of holiness. Amen. The fear of God is, 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 not, is not seen today a whole lot. 
in the house of God. Amen. People come in the house of God. They doing some of everything in the house of God. They saying some of everything in the house of God. They acting in the kind a lot of ways in the house of God that's unbecoming to a Christian. Amen. In other words, they are not living the life of a child of God. And they saying that I'm a born again child of God. And you know what? I'm not the judge whether you are or not. That's not my call. But your lifestyle will tell off on you if, if you don't watch out. You're going to find yourself, glory to God, afraid to even go into the house of the Lord very soon. You watch and see what I'm saying. Hallelujah. Woo, glory to God. Life, as you know it, is about to change. God is going to begin to show himself strong in the church. And it's going to, it's going to, it's going to come a day as it was when Ananias and Sapphira. When they walked in the house, when they walked into the presence of the Lord. And they tried to deceive God. They thought they were deceiving man. But they were deceiving God. And because they was, came into church wanting to do what they want to do instead of doing what was in their heart to do and lie about it, I'm telling you, it got the attention of all that was around because they fell dead. They fell dead on the spot because they thought that they was lying to man. They thought that they were playing a game with man. They thought that they were manipulating man. They thought that they were deceiving man. But it was God that they were trying to deceive. They didn't realize it. And because they was trying to deceive God, God said, no, I created you. I gave life to you. I can take it away. And Anna and I fell dead right there on the spot. And before he fell dead, he, he was asked this question. Why have you lied to God? You have not lied to man. But why have you lied to God? And immediately he fell dead. Amen. I'm telling you, we're coming back into these days that the house of God is going to be so sacred, so holy, that you cannot come in the house of God in a certain way. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. There's a cleansing and there's a purging is about to come into the church like we've never experienced before. God is calling the church into a spirit of unity. God is calling the church into a spirit of one accord. And I want you to know that this is not something that I have picked out. This is something that God has given me. Amen. Even the scriptures that I'm reading today, and I believe that they was inspired and given to me by God. Amen. Look at verse number 22. Verse number 22. John 17 verse number 22. And the glory which thou gave me. Give it me. I have given them. That they may be one. Even as we are one. God is wanting us to become one. With him. He wants to become in one accord with him. He's called us into a spirit of unity. He's called into a spirit of one mind. He's called into a spirit of. Of one accord. Amen. With him. Look at verse number 23. I in them and thou in me. That they may be made perfect in one. God is showing us. The John 17 unity. God is showing us. The John 17 unity. I never thought about this. Before. But when I, when I heard that message. Again that was prophesied over me last night. And it made me, it made me, it made me go back and see what I've been preaching. And, and I'm preaching along the same line that was prophesied. Amen. Unity. Amen. And when I, when I heard that prophecy again, boy, the presence of God just overwhelmed me. Just like, I don't know what. Amen. And so God is dealing, God is dealing with the heart. Amen. God is dealing with the heart of the church because the church should have no prejudice in the church. 
The church shouldn't have no no bitterness in the church. There shouldn't be no no anger, no no strife in the church. But if you go to churches, I guarantee you, you're going to look at someone and they're going to say, well, what is they doing here? You know, instead of them walking in love and, 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 won't, and walk up to you and, and greet you with a holy kiss, they're going to look at you and, and, and they're going to cut you down with their eyes and they're going to kill you with their words. Folks, words are powerful. Words are powerful. And we need to understand what God is saying here. Because God is calling the church into a spirit of unity. And in one accord. Verse number 24. Father, I will that they also whom thou had given me be with me where I am. That they may behold my glory which thou had given me. For thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. Notice what he said. For thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. Verse 25. O righteous Father, the world had not known thee, but I have known thee. See, Jesus, he's, he's interceding for his followers. And he's imparting, he's imparting the life and the nature of God to everyone that follow him. Amen. And so that there will not be a problem for a spirit of unity to be among them. He's imparting his nature. He's imparting his character. He's imparting who he is and who sent him. It, it was God. <clears throat> and he's imparting it into the heart of them that followed him. Why? Because he's expecting them to walk in the earth as he walked in unity with the Father. He's expecting you and I to walk in unity with the Father. And to see ourselves and identify ourselves with the Father and in the Father and the Father in you and in me. It's so important that we see this, folks. It's so important that we see this because God is not pleased with a lot of things that is happening right now in the house of God. And God is calling us together. He's calling us to, to examine our hearts, to examine our motives, to examine everything that he had created us to accomplish in our hearts for him, for the kingdom of God. We have to examine ourselves today. Amen. We have to examine ourselves today. Glory to God. Amen. And so now look at verse number, verse number 26. He said, and I have declared unto them thy name. Who's talking here? It's Jesus. He said, Father, I have declared unto them your name. Amen. Thy name. And will declare it that the love wherewith thou had loved me may be in them. Glory to God. That the love wherewith thou had loved me may be in them. See, if we're going to walk in unity as a body of Christ, if we're going to walk in one accord, folks, we're going to have to walk in love. We're going to have to walk in love. Amen? And I in them. Glory to God. Now I'm going to take you over to John chapter 15. John chapter 15. I want you to 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 be to come with me now to John chapter 15. And I want you to look here. Amen. Glory to God. I want you to look here and see John chapter 15 and verse number 1. John 15 and verse 1 it says, I am the vine and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. How many of you know that it's time for a purging? It's time for a purging in the house of God? Amen? Because you see, those that are walking in discord, they're going to fall farther and farther away from God. And those that are seeking to walk closer to God, to walk in unity with God, 
they're going to draw closer and closer to God. I'm seeing this in my spirit right now, folks. God is about to release a spirit of unity upon the heart of every man. That means that those who are not walking in unity will have the opportunity to turn from their wicked way and submit to the will of God. And if they choose not to, they're going to become as dead fruit. They're going to be cut off because they're not walking in the life and in the nature of the vine. If they're not being a part of the vine, then they've been cut off from the vine. And this is why they are angry. Because there's no love in them. This is why they're fighting. This is why they're bickering. This is why there's so much discord amongst in the church. Because the love of the Father is not in them. And God said, when I bring a division, when I bring a separation between you and them, he said, don't go after them because I separated them. Don't go after them because I separated them. But if they repent, if they repent, then you can receive them back into the sheepfold. But as long as they are settled in their own way, doing what they want to do, trying to interfere with what I want to do in the heart of God, the people that are trusting me, the people that love me, the people that are walking up right before me, I will protect my own. But those that I want to bring in the discord, trying to snatch them out of my hand, I will bring a division. For what I have, for that which God, my Father has given me, I will not lose not one. Who glory to God. Mm. Folks, we are at a crossroad and it's time for the church to come to a spirit of unity <clears throat> and in one accord. <clears throat> Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, let's read just a little bit more. My God, time flies when you're having fun. So it says in, in verse number, in John chapter 15, in verse number two, verse number three says, now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Now notice what he said. He's still encouraging us in verse number four. He's still encouraging us because see the word is cleansing. It has cleansing power. The word has purifying power. The word has the ability to wash you. To make you clean. To set you in a place where God's unity is being manifest among us. Amen. Now notice what it said in verse number three. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me and I in you. See, that's that spirit of unity. That spirit of one accord. That spirit of one mind. That spirit of one vision. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. The spirit of unity. The spirit of one mind. The spirit of one accord. The spirit of love. No more can ye except ye abide in me. I am the vine and ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch. There it is, folks. 
he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gathered him and cast him into the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me, verse number 7, very, very important, my God. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Now I'm going to read that again. If ye abide in me, if ye abide, if you walk in unity, if you walk in one accord, if you walk in one spirit, if you walk in one vision, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Verse number eight. Herein is my Father glorified that ye bear much fruit. So shall ye be my disciples. Verse number 9. As the Father had loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. Walking in the love of God brings us to the spirit of unity and one accord like we've never thought we could ever walk in. Folks, this is God's doing and God will do it until that day. My time is up for that message. It's time for us to go into our communion now. It's time for us to go into our communion. But folks, I got some more along that line that God has given me. I'm not done with the message. I just have to stop right now because this is the first Sunday. And it's time for us to enter into our communion service. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. So now let's go. Let's open up our Bible to 1 Corinthians. We're going to our second order of service now. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 11. I need to uh, pass out the uh, so that we can all be on one accord. Yeah. No, no, no. The, the elements. Make sure everyone get the elements. Glory to God. Let me Amen. Those of you that's going to be doing communion with us, go ahead and get your elements together. And I'm going to pray over them in just a few minutes. Amen. Glory to God. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. No one eat, no one drink right now. We will be all observing together. Amen. Glory to God. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse number 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show forth the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whoso shall, whosoever shall eat this bread... And drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. 
He that eat it and drink it unwordly, eat it and drink it damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Let us, Father, in the name of Jesus, as we examine our hearts right now, God, you will reveal to us the things, the areas that we need to ask forgiveness, repent, and Father, you're going to forgive each and every one because according to your word, whosoever sin you remit, they shall be remitted. And whosoever sin you shall retain, they shall be retained. So, Father, I remit the sin. And I ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus, to forgive us of our sin. Let us examine our hearts. The Spirit of the Lord is in here right now. Jesus. Thank you, Father. You that are with us by the internet, you examine your hearts also. If you're going, if you take communion with us, you examine your heart also. Amen. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. And the scripture goes on to say, For he that eat and drink it unworthily, eat and drink it damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For many, for this cause many are weak and sickly, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. Father, in the name of Jesus, as we have examined our hearts, <clears throat> I ask you, Father, to forgive each and every one of us and wash us clean with the washing of the word. Forgive us, Lord God, and we present our bodies to you today as living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, for this is our reasonable service. Thank you for it, Father. Amen. Right now, what I'm holding in my hand is the broken body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I'm going to sanctify this and then we're going to all eat together. Father, in the name of Jesus, you was wounded for our transgressions. You was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon you. And with your stripes, we are healed. Father, I thank you that you took those stripes upon your back so that we can walk in divine health and healing. We receive our healing now. In Jesus' name, let us eat. Thank you for your miracle healing power, Father. The brokenness of your body is releasing strength into our bodies. Divine health and healing is the children's bread. So as we partake of this, Lord God, we are eating healing. Thank you for it, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Mm. Mm. Here's this cup. This cup represents the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed, we are delivered, we are made free. 
restored to right standing with Almighty God. Father, I sanctify this cup. I hold it up before your Father. And I ask you, Father, that as we partake of this cup, we are partaking of your divine nature, which separates us from the nature of the world, which calls us to come into a spirit of unity and one accord. Father, we receive our redemption rights even now in Jesus' name. Let us take and let us drink. Thank you, Father. He was wounded for our transgressions and he was bruised for our iniquity. Surely he bore our sorrow and with his stripes we are healed. We are healed. We are healed. Thank you for it, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. Glory to God. I pray that you, by the internet, are taking communion with us. Amen. Now, we're going to go ahead on and take our offering. We're going to receive our offering right now. Amen. Glory to God. No. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. The Bible says in Mark, in uh, let's get Second Corinthians chapter nine, since we already hit in, in Corinthians. Second Corinthians chapter nine, verse six. But this I say: He which soweth bound sparingly shall also reap sparingly. He that soweth bountifully shall also reap bountifully. Every man. Mm, excuse me. Every man according as he purposed in his heart, so let him give. Not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always have an all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. As it is written, He had dispersed abroad. He had given to the poor, his righteousness remaineth forever. Now he that ministered bread seed to the soul, both minister bread for your food and multiply your seed sown, and increase the fruit of your righteousness. Glory to God. God wants to increase the fruit of your righteousness. Are y'all ready for that? Amen. Glory to God. So am I. So let us give today. Let us give unto the Lord. Let us give from our heart. And let us give with a spirit of love. Amen. So that when we give, we come in an agreement with the word of God. And it shall be given unto us. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together. And running over shall men give into our bosom. With the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured unto you again. Amen. I believe that we are right now at that time that we will experience the goodness of the Lord, even in our giving. Hallelujah. Amen. Everybody got their uh, offering together?
Amen. Glory to God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we hold this offering up before you, Father. We declare and we decree, Father, in the name of Jesus, that it shall be according to your word. Because we have given, it shall come back into our life. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give into our bosom. With the same measure that we meet with all, it shall be measured to us again. You say, he that soweth sparingly shall also reap sparingly. And he that soweth bountifully shall also reap bountifully. Father, I believe your word. Now, Father, we stand upon that principle. And we declare, Father, today is a day of new beginning in our finances. In Jesus' name. Because we are obeying you, you shall honor your word concerning us. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Glory to God. Right now, if you never made Jesus Christ Lord of your life, I want to introduce you to the one who has made a difference in millions and millions of others' lives. His name is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He made a difference in my life in 1982. He can make a difference in your life right now in, in 2017. Amen. I know what he did for me. He set me in a, in a new place in life. A life that I was living, I just didn't care for it no longer. But when I came to the end of my rope, when I acknowledged God and his son Jesus Christ, whom he had sent into the earth, to pay the price or the ransom for my sin. It was only then that my life became meaningful. Oh, glory to God. And I know that I'm talking to people all around the world. And I know that you desire to have that same experience. To have a meaningful life. Because someone has spoke to you. And they have told you that you will never amount to nothing. Someone has said to you that you will be just like your uncle or your daddy, who was, which might have been an alcoholic or junkie. And they said, you are following the same path. I want to tell you that that don't have to be your path. I want to tell you that God has given you an opportunity to, 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 to cut the course of your, of your uh, 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 generational lifestyle. Amen. And he want to give you, he wants you to start a new generation of lifestyle. And that's serving God. Living for God. Amen. I want to encourage you today. If you never made Jesus Christ Lord of your life, I'm going to introduce you to one who has set millions of people free that are able to share with you his love, his compassion. His name is Jesus. Will you acknowledge him today just say this with me say Lord Jesus I repent of my sin and I ask you to forgive me come into my heart and live your life in me I make you my Lord and my Savior amen if you said that simple prayer believe me that you are born again I believe that you are born again and I believe that God has done a work in your heart and I believe that from this day forth, you're going to begin to experience the new life. I want you to do yourself a favor. Find yourself a good church that is a teaching the Word of God. A good Bible church that is teaching the Word of God. And go there. Amen. Go there. And be a part of the family of God. Because now you are a part of the family of God. If you're here today, you have special prayer requests right now. I will pray for you today. I will pray for you now. Come. I'll pray for you, sir. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for my dear sister. I thank you, Lord God, that your hand continually rests upon her. I declare and decree, Father, divine health and healing, for this is the children's bread. I cancel every assignment, Father, against her in the spiritual realm. I release the spirit of faith over her, Father, and I declare, Father, 
your kingdom come, your will be done in her life in earth as it is in heaven. Father, I thank you for it now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for my dear sister. I thank you, Lord God, that your hand continually rest upon her. I thank you, Father, Lord God, that the work that you began in her heart, God, God, it is not done yet. Father, you began in a new work. You began in a new work, God, that gonna go, they're gonna go from her into her siblings in the name of Jesus. I claim there for the kingdom of God. I cancel every spoken curse that has been spoken over this family in the spiritual realm. And Father, I declare and decree salvation over this family. I decree salvation over her siblings in the name that is above every name. And her children, her grandchildren, her great-grandchildren, her great-great-grandchildren, I declare, Father, a turnaround in that genealogy, in that, in that family tree. In Jesus' name. The spirit of life shall begin to flow like never before into this family. And God, I claim them for the glory of God, our Father. Amen and amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Anybody else want prayer today before we go? No? Amen. Well, let's pray for them that are about the internet. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every man and woman on the sound of my voice by the internet. Father, I am asking you, Lord God, that you will breathe upon them in a supernatural way. Father, I release the spirit of faith right now for healing in the name of Jesus from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet. I counsel every demonic assignment that is coming against their health. I release, Father, in the name of Jesus, divine health. From the crown of their head to the soles of their feet. I speak to that spirit of infirmity. I command you by the authority of Jesus Christ. Who have given me the authority. I command you to go now. I command you to go now from that child of God. Father I release the spirit of faith. The spirit of unity. The spirit of one accord. To begin operating in their hearts. That the word of God will take first place Father. That we will stand upon your promise. And then we will know the truth. And then that truth is going to make us free. From every spirit of infirmity, sickness and disease. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. We love you. We thank God for you. God bless you. Until that day we meet again, amen. Thank you. Glory to God.